Hi, everyone. Welcome to Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. This is a podcast in which we're going to talk about everything that has to do with seniors uh, living in the home of their choice. Our goal is to keep our seniors as independent as possible for as long as possible. And today I have a wonderful friend of mine, Christina Ballard from Harbor Chase of Gainesville, is here today to talk about something that she and I get questions about all the time. Um, I want to welcome you, Christina, to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. So Christina has an interesting background like me. I think you were attracted to seniors from a young age. Tell me about that. Very much so. Um, So growing up, I always wanted to be where the adults were, not where the kids (laughs) were. Um, Wanted to see, hear, know what was going on. And when I was about 12 years old, there was an elderly lady in our neighborhood who had lost her husband. Um, And I started spending time with her because I just felt really bad that she was alone all the time. Um, So I would go and spend weekends with her. I would go to church with her, um, go just hang out and watch movies with her. And she ended up being one of my best friends um, until I moved away to go to college. Wow. And that story is a lot like mine. Um, When I was 12 years old, I was a very, very shy um, little girl. I could barely say boo to anyone, but my father was a pastor and he said, hey, We got a lot of seniors that just kind of sit there for about 15 minutes before church. Why don't you go and greet them? And I said, man, I don't even know how to do that. And he said, well, you just go up and you say, how do you do? And I said, I started laughing. I said, Dad, I'm 12. 12 12-year-olds don't say that. But literally, I somehow gathered the courage, went to address them the first Sunday, and they just wrapped their arms around me week after week and really influenced my life. And I started, they started teaching me about life and and I started coming out of my shell. I would never have been sitting here today if it hadn't been for their influence in my life. So I really liked when I saw that in your bio, I was really um, warmed by that, that that was your background as well. So tell me then about your education. What brought you to the professional side of this? So I pursued um, my bachelor's and then my master's degree at the University of Florida in therapeutic recreation. Um, Ended up uh, being employed as a life enrichment director in skilled nursing, uh, where my main focus was really creating programs to enhance and improve the lives of seniors in long-term care. And you were there for Um, a long time. Yes, um, 11 and a half years. Yeah, okay. Um, And then I made a transition to assisted living and continued doing life enrichment for another year and a half. Um, And then the opportunity um, for the director of sales position came available. Um, So I stepped into that role about three and a half years ago. And since then, my main focus has been helping place families into assisted living and memory care. Yes, and uh, you and I work well, very well together, and we work together often. Um, I don't talk about it too much in the podcast, but that is what I do with most of my day is assist people uh, to find the right community for them. And a lot of times that happens to be Harbor Chase in Gainesville. Um, Harbor Chase actually has way more communities than just in Gainesville. What were we saying? 10 different states, I think. Yes, we're spread across 10 different states currently and over 30 communities. Okay, great, because I know we're going to have some listeners that are, you know, maybe outside of the the Gainesville listening area. So, Um, and I wanted to talk specifically today about something that you and I hear all the time. We will do a tour. It'll be a bang-up tour. Uh, the The potential resident loves what they see. They love the activities you have. They, you know, they love the different dining options that you have at Harbor Chase. Um, they love the salon. Uh, they they love the idea that they're going to have transportation. And then they say, oh, but it's not time yet. And yes. so, <laughs> <laughs> so we want to talk about the fact that sometimes it's hard to identify when that time is, right. and sometimes we can wait so long 
that it's really uh, things happen that are are very negative and we don't want that. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk to you about that time, that right time. What mm-hmm. are some of the things that you look for when it's time for someone to make that move? So some of the things, some of the initial signs may be a little more subtle. Mm-hmm. Um, the The house may be a little more unkept from okay. what they normally have, have mm-hmm. kept it. Um, you know, folks who were maybe historically fastidious housekeepers, now things are getting left laying around a little bit more. They're not keeping up right. with the laundry. They're not able to keep up with just a normal routine household chores like they once were. Um, so that's one of the early signs. Forgetting to pay bills uh, is yes. another one. It yep. may not be as evident initially to family mm-hmm. members or others, you know, kind of looking from the outside in. Um, right. But that's a common one mm-hmm. that, that we come across. Um, forgetting to take medications or mixing up medications. Um, yep. That can be another kind of early sign that maybe some more support right. is needed. Yes, yeah, because you guys provide in assisted living. Uh, most of your assisted livings are going to have housekeeping. They're going to have med management. What yes. are some of the other things we're looking for as far as, you know, this might be the right time? Um, changes in hygiene practices mm. is another one. So folks who, you know, showered regularly, maybe they're doing sink baths now because they're having a harder time getting in and out right. of the shower. Or maybe they're forgetting to take a shower. Yes, And they think right. they've taken a shower. Um, that and, can be another one. And sometimes our loved ones, as they get older, they tend to get a little bit more stubborn. And so you, <laughs> you might say, hey, uh, I smell, uh, we need to have a bath, and um, they don't necessarily want to listen to their family members anymore. And Absolutely. so family just, you know, either has to put up with the um, unsavory smells or <laughs> or they just don't hang around anymore. Right. So a lot of times, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to ask family to help them with bathing, um, but they also don't want you coming in and saying, hey, by the way, it's time for a bath. Right. Absolutely. So. <laughs> and and that's part of the fight to maintain independence. Yes. Too, so And staff is well trained to handle those times. Absolutely. So yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so what are some other um, things? One of the, one of the other big ones um, would be poor eating habits, mm. weight loss. Um, that can start being something gradual, may not be as noticeable at first, but over time, um, you know, they may not be cooking. The way that they used to, and they're just grabbing snacks or things that are easy because they're having a harder time right. cooking their meals, here's cooking an, nutritious meals. So. Here's another thing, too. Some You mentioned weight loss. What about weight gain? Because all they're doing is sitting there eating box after box of Twinkies. Have you ever seen that? Um, yeah, uh, actually on occasion because they start I've eating more that. junk food Yep. rather than eating healthy well-balanced meals. Right, because they're too tired or, you know, things ache. Um, Joints are aching. Uh, They don't want to go grocery shopping and pick the heavier stuff. So they're grabbing chips. They're grabbing Twinkies. I've seen the weight loss, the weight loss, but I've also seen the weight gain. Right. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So what are some other things? Um, Symptoms of depression, signs and symptoms of depression from isolation. So for our seniors, Mm -hmm. Um, that's something I noticed actually when I was volunteering with elder care, Meals on Wheels during COVID. Yes. Um, delivering meals to seniors in the community. The demand went up quite a bit during that time. Um, but I found so many of them are very isolated. and Families weren't coming to visit as often. Right. And when I would go to deliver that meal, they just wanted somebody to talk to. You yeah. know, they were very yeah. lonely and very isolated. Um, and that can definitely lead to, to depression. Yeah, for as well. sure, for sure. And it's not that families don't want to visit. And Absolutely not. That, you know, stuff that it's not important to them. It's just that when you're in that sandwich generation, you have maybe children to care for, you've got a job, yes. and you've got loved ones. And so your loved ones aren't going to necessarily get the amount of attention that they want or that they need and the engagement that they need. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the other things is making sure that the the systems that you have in place are working for everybody involved since we're talking about families. Because mm-hmm. sometimes yes. our seniors are relying on a lot of other people to help them 
be at home. Right. Whether right. that's relying on folks to do their grocery shopping, to take them to appointments, um, to come and help clean the house, to help yeah. prep meals. Um, and is is that system actually working for everybody that's involved? Um, yeah. A lot of times the individual, it's working for them because mm-hmm. everybody's coming and catering to them and, right. and taking yes. care of all of their needs. So for them, it's working. But is it really working for everybody else? Yeah, I've seen a lot of family members that may be out of state even, mm-hmm. and their loved one is insisting on staying in their their home. But it's coming at the price of, you know, the the family members that are out of state just really either being super stressed out all the time, making sure their needs are met, or them having to leave and come down and give care back and forth, even, you know, even if they're within just a few hours. They're still having to pack themselves up at the end of the day several times a week and go down and make sure that all those needs are being met. Right. Absolutely. What are some other things? Um, one of the other big ones is falls. Uh, That's one yeah. that we see often. Um, they start having falls in the home. Which could be related to the med management, um, poor mm-hmm. eating, all of that. It could be related to, yep. yeah, a number of different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens, you know, if they're home alone and somebody's coming to check on them regularly, but they fall during the night, how long right. are they going to lay there before they can get help? Um you know, and injuries can happen, too, yes. if they start having yeah. falls. Uh, so that's a big one. Yep. And a lot of times, unfortunately, we'll have these conversations. It will, we'll see all of these signs. Right. People will say, nope, I'm still just not ready. And the next call that we get is, uh-oh, mom had a fall uh, and is in the hospital now. And now we're kind of needing, we have to make a move now. Right. So. Absolutely. Yep. And at that point, there's usually a recovery from something, from some sort of an injury. Most definitely. And sometimes when folks wait too long to come in, they don't have an opportunity to really take advantage of all the things that are offered in the senior living community. Yes, I (laughs) have, especially those that are, are going in. On a more independent level, right? Um, a lot of times I've seen people go in and they will just let their hair down and have a ball. They don't have to cook anymore. They don't have to clean anymore. Right. Their laundry is done for them. And they're they're having all these activities. They don't have to drive anymore. That's a big weight off as Absolutely. well. And so um, I'll, I will watch them just kind of unfold and have a ball. And when they get in there at the right time, they can still have a blast, and and they can get to know staff um, at a time when it's not stressful and right. and they're enjoying themselves. Absolutely. I think you were mentioning a story that you had about some people recently that um, were kind of looking and uh, kind of saying, "Yeah, not yet, not yet." And so, so share a little bit about that. Yes, I had a family that um, the the nieces had guardianship over their aunt, and they were a little concerned about her being at home. She did have Mm -hmm. some caregivers coming in, um, but was maybe needing a little more support, even though she was very much in denial about needing support. Um, (laughs) She had actually tried to lock one of the caregivers out of her home because she didn't think that she needed them there. Um, And the nieces were terrified of making the decision to move her into a community because they were afraid that she would hate them if they made that decision and moved her. Um, But we, you know, we kind of talked through that. We actually invited her to come in to have lunch, um, had a little celebration for her there. It was her birthday. So she came in and we had a little birthday party for her in the community. Oh, that's so nice. And she was thrilled, you know, with that experience. Um, So the niece was convinced to go ahead and move forward and make the change. Um, their aunt was a, a little upset just initially the first week or so because it's a big adjustment. It is but an adjustment. But since then, she has settled into the community um, very well. She's out every day. I love um, that. Walking around, engaging with the staff, engaging with other residents. Um, she's she's thriving and doing great. And now the, the nieces don't have to worry anymore about whether their aunt is taken care of. Yes, yeah. I've even had some people go and uh, just say, hey, I'm just going to do a 30-day respite or just 60 days just Mm -hmm. so I can recover better, and then I'll go back home. And after that time period, they say, oh, wow, wait, I'm having a ton of fun. 
I'm going to stay here where I've got all my needs met and I can come out of my apartment and join in any of the activities that are here. Right. And um, so they end up end up having a ball. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I love those stories. The positive stories are some of my favorites. Um, and I was going to say uh, one other thing um, to you I was going to mention. I know you're very involved in the community mm-hmm. um, and the walk to end Alzheimer's is coming up in the fall, and that's right. something you and I serve on that committee together. Right. Um, and I know that even in your community, you guys are doing some fun things. What are you guys doing? You're doing something that's coming up soon even. I don't know if this will air before then, but right. tell me what's going on. <laughs> so we are partnering with North Florida Healthcare Association and hosting some Wind Down Wednesday events um, once a month from now up until the walk. And so from now until October 23rd? 20, yep. What? 23rd or 21st? Oh, I'd have to look. But. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's um, several months. Yes. So um, And we're inviting all of our healthcare professionals to come in and enjoy wine and small plates um, prepared by Chef Dustin. Who um, is awesome. Right. Um, and it's $10 donation to the Alzheimer's Association and all you can eat and drink during that two and a half hours. So. I love it. And not only that, but um, the healthcare professionals can also bring a spouse. So Absolutely. Or a, or a significant a other. Mm-hmm. So you can bring a guest. So, But definitely bring your $10 a piece because this is raising funds and awareness. And right. I love that you guys are doing something like that. So. So. We also have another fundraiser that we're doing as well. Um, our life enrichment team does collaborative art projects with the residents oh, every month. Oh, I saw the one they so just did. It's that's so going to great. Be, yes, that's going to be framed. And oh. we're going to do a silent auction for the, okay. for the artwork. Um, and those proceeds will also go towards the Alzheimer's Association. Oh. So we're getting our residents involved in helping to raise money as well. So uh, to our listeners, um, anybody in our listeners can go on and auction or bid for that because we can send it to them and it's going to be on air? I believe or? that Fred's – yeah, I, I believe it will be posted on our social media on Facebook okay. Um, okay. once he gets it framed and, and listed. And okay. then folks will be able to go in and, and put in oh, their Oh, that was a and... great piece of art, too. So I'll try to remember to uh, post that on here so we can access it. Well, Christina, thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. It's great having you. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, I'm sure we'll have you back again sometime. Um, for all our listeners, we would really appreciate it if you would like and share. And we'll see you back next time.